I was a lot younger, I was really interested in science and creating things. I always wondered why my school wasn't allowing young people like myself to play with science. Because I didn't have an opportunity at school, I started exploring with different components from things that I had taken apart at home and at my local science center, which challenged me to learn more about robotics and circuitry. The first thing I ever made was a brush bot. I had never seen one before, and STEAM and STEM learning wasn't popular yet, so I had to figure it out myself. I had taken apart my electric toothbrush, reorganized the components, and after a few different configurations, I built a robot out of it. This was the start of my love for robotics. They were shaky at first, but I experimented with the components to make it the best brush bot it could be. These are, these are the simplest of robots, but when given to a young person, they unlock a wealth of insight and a lot of questions. Good questions. I started sharing my findings with my friends and I found that they were equally fascinated. So I made a kit. When I was eight years old, I started a company to spread the fun and adventure of brush bots to young children in the hope that this would start their own scientific adventure. Now I'm finding that people of all ages love brush bots because it reignites the creativity in them they may have forgotten about. When people play with brush bots, their creative side comes out and they're reminded to look at a different perspective on creating things, being creative, and sharing creativity. So how many of you would call yourselves creative? Wow, quite a few of you. <laughs> how many of you have had an idea that could have been turned into a business? That's great. How many of you have actually acted on this idea and turned it into a reality? Interesting. <laughs> For those of you who don't think of yourselves as creative, how can we unlock creative power? Creativity is the key to being successful in a world full of advancing technology. When we combine our creativity with technology, we can find impressive new solutions to some of our problems in many areas such as healthcare, food industries, and the environment. But where do we start? How do we create creativity? One of the people that I really look up to is Chris Hadfield because he is very curious and he has seen the world from a different perspective than most of us have. Chris Hadfield said in his, in his children's book, your dreams are always waiting with you, just waiting. Big dreams about the kind of person you want to be, wonderful dreams about the life you will live, and dreams that actually can come true. So dreams are the first step towards creativity and creativity is how we can make all of our dreams come true. When I was really young, I dreamed of living on a planet called Lava Land, where I had special powers to be able to live in that environment. I made lots of drawings of what that environment looked like and the tools that I would need to survive in the harsh landscapes. Looking back, I now realize that I was actually engineering solutions for life in a harsh environment. These are creative sparks, ideas, that might help me to solve some of our problems in, with the environment here on Earth, or maybe to help me create solutions for in human interactions with other planets, like Mars. Actually, I even have brush bots on Mars. That's true, well, at least true for the Mars 112 storytelling project that my company was part of for Beakerhead Science Festival. I see brush bots a little bit like the coloring books of robotics. They're very simple, easy to understand, and easy to replicate. But like the pages of a coloring book, they invite us to be creative. And that's why no two brush bots end up being alike. They all look different and act differently. In robotics, brush bots can help us take those first steps and help us get started. Brush bots can spark an interest in computer coding. They, and they teach us how, how um, circuitry works. Learning to write code takes time, but it's something that most of us can do if we set our minds to it. It's actually not much different than when we first learned to hold a pencil crayon and color inside the lines. Coding is the language of how we can communicate with computers, robots, AI, and a lot of other technology. It's really important to develop coding skills at as young an age as possible, because coding is what allows us to program, repair, reinvent, and reinterpret robots and technology. 
I started learning code with Canada Learning Code, which was started by Melissa Sarifuddin. The workshops have expanded to many cities all across Canada, and the workshops introduced me to coding HTML, CSS, C++, Ruby, and Python. With Canada Learning Code, I learned the essential skills to create whatever I need to. So, at this point in my journey, I had learned about circuits and learned how to use different coding languages. But coloring inside the lines will only take you so far. I think that one of the best ways to learn to be creative is to spend time with creative people. People who like to color outside the lines. Like the people who hang out at a makerspace. Because the makerspace in my room could only take me so far, I had to find a bigger place with more tools that I could make more complex projects with. A makerspace is a, an amazing place where people can make amazing things because they're filled with wonderful tools to enable your dreams to become a reality. A makerspace is a place that's filled with amazing people who are creative and innovative and are happy to collaborate. A makerspace is a place where people come together to make amazing things. The, they will help the people who are just starting. They will draw the lines for them to color and then teach them how to color outside the lines. Makerspaces allow for uninhibited creativity. One of the most exciting areas I've been able to explore is wearable technology. I met the Make Fashion team at a makerspace, and since then, they've been challenging and supporting my ideas. This is my Nautilus dress. I I got to start exploring biomimicry and how my fashion design combined with wearable technology can mimic bioluminescent creatures. My Nautilus dress helps make connections between the person wearing the dress and the people around them by using proximity sensors integrated with laser cut designs. This is a perfect example of how creativity can help people be to become more aware, stand out, or blend in. We're already seeing robots start to help us with the parts of our lives that need to be more accurate, like brain surgery. We're also seeing robots start to help us with the mundane everyday tasks like vacuuming. So as robotics and technology become more integrated with our lives, we will have more time to think creatively and to solve problems, coloring outside the lines. So color with the skills you have and learn to color outside the lines. And then, learn to draw the lines themselves. And maybe one day, the lines won't be necessary anymore. For me, it all started with a brush bot, a dream. Thank you.